And welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna start out here in the data center because most of the video is probably gonna be at the computer but up here I have a Synology box it's the RS1219 plus which is uh, more or less just a rack mountable DS1819 plus or DS1815 plus maybe 17 plus I don't know um, it's, it's more or less one of those 8 bay units but in a rack and I purchased this one to have a place for my data to keep those safe um, not as if I don't have enough room for data but I need somewhere to have it where I don't have to mess with it uh, because a lot of this other stuff I mess with and um, I don't want to be moving data forth and back and so on and forth and, but I also want this box to be running my um, ubiquity unify controller and some other ubiquity stuff that we'll get back to in another video right now the ubiquity unify controller is running down here on this awesome Lenovo x3650 model 4 but it's it's running on a virtual Windows server 2016 I believe it was and there is really no reason to have a like a full server 2016 to run that a little bit when this Synology box up here can uh, run docker and you can run this application the unify controller on top of that so we're gonna try and see if we can move it up here I probably need to find out how to do a backup of the old box and how to import that in the new box but we'll probably get to that but first we have to install docker on this so let's go to the computer and see if we can do that that should be simple Okay, we have moved into the computer and we don't need to see me this big. So we'll move me down there and we will minimize this. So right now my Unify controller, Ubiquity Manager, I guess I'll call it here, or the server that is running this, um, it's running on server 2016. It's not doing much, but yeah, it's, if we press the button here, we can see that well, there is a new Windows update, there is also a Java update, and yeah, Windows is kind of maintenance heavy on that regard. Every month there is a good deal of updates and stuff, so um, yeah, we don't want to do that, but we, we are going to be moving it. But first we have to install it on the Synology box, and I have logged into my Synology box here. That's the IP that I'm using here, and it's, as I said, the RS1219 Plus. Brand new unit from, from this year, but we need to install Docker, and that is very simple. Um, yeah, we could just use the package sensor, which is right there. And we can just search for Docker. There. And... I guess they have changed the, the logo for it, so okay, we will install this this Docker then. And we need to select the drive where to install it. That's probably a good choice. Or is it? No, it's not. Volume 1 is my iSCSI storage, and, and volume 2 is normal storage. So we'll put it on there. Uh, always install new packages on this volume. Yeah. I don't know. That's probably okay. Docker, Docker Institute, blah 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 blah. A lot of good stuff. Run after installation. Yes. Let's do that. Oh, now it changed the icon also. So I was looking for this icon and it wasn't there. So that was weird. So now that Docker is installed, we need to um, we need to make a little folder for our Ubiquity. Uh, so let's go into File Station here, and it has created a Docker folder for us here, or a shared folder. And we can in there we can create a, another folder, create folder, and we're just this is for the Unify. Um, so I think we'll call it Unify. Unify 
manager. There. Cool, we have that. So now we need to uh, we need to install this Unify Manager in Docker. So we need to go up here and we need to open Docker. There we get some good new information. Welcome to Docker. Open help. Don't show this again. And thank you. We'll close that. Right now we have nothing and we have no images downloaded because we just installed this. So in Docker here, we need to find the right package. Um, also, we can see what resources we have available. Right now, the CPU is being used 2%, and we are using uh, 672 megabytes out of 16 gigabytes. I think we are good to go. So to get the package we need, we go here to registry. And up here in the top, we can uh, search for it and um, to, to find it you just type in unify search and there is different um, packages available a very widely used one is this one by jacob alberti i am butchering that um, but we can just get that if we click this button we get some help um, information on how to use this package we'll go back to that but let's just download this image while we go and check that so please choose a tag is there any reason why i shouldn't just use the latest i think we'll just use latest so let's get that and it's uh, downloading i don't know how big this is um, but it is getting that it's growing I think it's about 700 megabytes and over here there is some help on um, how this package uh, works and what to look out for and yeah there is a lot of stuff you can do that I don't know much about so let's go back and see how it's doing we are almost there okay so it completed download and we should be able to image there we have our image so we can launch our image okay and we can change the name which is probably a good idea um, if I controller enable resources limitation mm, nah I think it's it's probably not gonna take many resources but still advanced settings we need to do some stuff here first thing we want this to start every time the server starts over we want it to be on we don't want to have to go in and turn it on if i for some reason want to reset my synology box i want this to start up automatically then we can create a shortcut on the desktop should we do that i don't think it matters but we have to go into volume because um, all the settings that you set up in Unify, they are stored, right now they are stored in the container uh, together with the image file of Unify. So if I decide to delete this, I will also delete the configuration file. So what you do is you put the configuration file outside of the container. That way you can delete the container and you can reinstall it and just it will all be good. So um, pointing that somewhere different will save you the time of, um, of backing up as much. And I'll be able to just delete the Unify controller and make it again and all the settings will be there. So we, um, we add a folder and we choose Docker and we choose our Unify manager. We should probably have called it controller. Hmm. Do we want to change that? Unify. Yeah, we want to change that. So we will um, we'll go in here, file station, and we will just docker, and we can, we can rename this, can we? We can. So we'll just call it unify controller instead. There. Okay. Makes more sense. So we go back, advanced settings, auto start, volume. Add folder, Docker, controller, 
select and then we have to mount it and this is uh, it's a Linux stuff so for slash var for slash lib for slash unify there and that part should be good to go then we need to check some network um, right now it's being bridged I just want to use unify on the Synology box so instead we're down here and just use same network as docker host that way the unify controller will be on the same IP number as the Synology box it will just have a different port number so you cannot join other network using the same network as docker host port settings fine links yeah it, it got pretty pissed when i did that just don't want to do anything more but let's try it anyway let's see if this won't work next next finish run container wizard yeah so let's see what happens will this run for us so container it has created a container for us it claims that it's running so I logged into my Unify controller right now and this is the one running on that Windows server and I probably need to um, I need to find out how to transfer this backup here it's set to do an auto backup every day like this so I have kind of this is the backup from today and I haven't made any changes so I have downloaded that just do it again I'm hoping that we can somehow upload that and do something so that I don't have to configure everything again that's that's the general idea I'm not gonna delete this one before I have the other one running uh, I wonder if that IP number is up and running now so let's try that so let's try that IP number I need a colon there go something is answering so we have the wizard the wizard boss so what country restore from previous backup can we do that that would be neat so let's try and press that uh, find a file that could be in the download library yeah it's right there let's try and open that one restoring from backup are you sure i am pretty sure yeah let's um let's shut this one down first so that we don't break anything let's go in here and we will tell this windows machine to, uh, to stop the unifier controller show update yes yes go away are you sure i am so sure i don't want to and go away and this one close are you sure i am so pretty sure so now the unifier controller should be down on that one and we should be I, I have no idea if anything would happen but no reason why to take that chance so confirm working please wait wow that if this works that would be really easy system is being restored please wait um, close How long do I wait? To take a sneak peek and see if it's doing anything. 6.7% processing. Yeah. Let's try and refresh it. Okay, so it might be rebooting. Okay. Or I might just have crashed it. Who knows? Oh, now it's doing something with the process. It's up and running. Yeah, notice we have a new number here. This is 5.10 and before I had 5.06. So I should be able to log in here. This is interesting. Yeah, it remembers. Current site, my playhouse. Welcome back. Here's what's new. That's nice. Dark mode. I really don't I would like to go through this can I go back and check this later guys uh, it looks really promising 
security, stability and performance. Yeah, yeah, they make it look really cool. I gathered that. Three switches, two access points. Um, yeah, the USG is not um, being used right now. Uh, so let's check my devices. Yeah, everything looks promising. It's fine. Some of it might need a, an update here and there, but it looks like it has imported everything. So that is pretty neat. Uh, so now I can, I can more or less, I can remove this window server. We can shut that down. Maybe I'll just keep it around for a couple of days until I, I know that all is good. So shutting that down. Not as if I don't have the power to run an extra window server, but I really wanted the UPQT controller to be running on my Synology NAS so that it's managed over there. Yeah, just one last thing. Over here on the Synology NAS, we had this Docker folder, and underneath that we have our UPQT controller folder, and down uh, in here, it, uh, it has all the configuration files now, which is awesome. So now I can go out, I could take, um, I could delete this, and I could make it again, and point it to the same place, and I would be up and running very shortly if something happened. Or I could probably also just copy those files over to another location and do the same thing. That, um, that actually went pretty good. I wasn't expecting it to be this easy. I have to go mingle around with it, see what it wanted. Uh, all that yellow stuff and connection and stuff and so on. But right now the Ubiquiti Unify controller is running on my Synology NAS using Docker. That is something that I wanted because I also want to be running the Ubiquiti Unify video solution because I have purchased a couple of cameras here and I'm going to be making another video where I install those and have them running on the same system. Also running Docker, I expect, and storing all the video data up here on my Synology NAS. So um, please give this video a like so I know that you like to see that. Yeah, I have to beg for it, don't I? So, yeah, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye-bye.